so so hey everybody uh this is uh our second year running uh, uh presentations online and we're happy to have alex uh, back with us on um the all needed camping checklist alex take it away all right thanks chris so yep second year uh, very excited the uh, picture here is from Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, Hollywood take. Uh, great, uh, great book, uh, great movie. Uh, and um, the, the gist of, uh, I guess the gist of my presentation can be summarized in don't panic, it's going to be fine. Uh, HSP is a, a very nice camping situation. It's camping with access to flush toilets. There's hot showers. I, I actually took a picture. I figured everybody else is taking pictures of telescopes and um, you know pretty uh, views. I'll take a picture of a toilet. Uh, so I did that. that. That's the next picture. You'll see it's uh, nice and comfortable. Um, and then um, our host is experienced learning. Uh, they've they've been around for many years. They know how to handle campers. They know how to handle Novak. They've supported HSP for many years. Uh, they're very well prepared to host us so we can concentrate on what we're there for, which is our shared love of the night sky and astronomy. All right. And then uh, Novak, of course, has uh, plenty of people to help. Uh, we're we're like-minded people. We're there for the same reason. Uh, we support and help each other. So it, it definitely um, is a resource you can rely on. Um, that being said, of course, we should do our part to be self-sufficient. Um, that means uh, prepare, uh, bring enough uh, necessary supplies. Don't bring what you don't need. So I'll be talking about that momentarily. Um, but remember, it's not a survival situation. It's fun to play one. So I uh, there's a lot of tactical equipment out there. I bring my tactical espresso cappuccino equipment, and I make a tactical espresso on the mountain. That's a lot of fun. So certainly. You know, don't don't let this hold you back. But it's not going to be a survival situation. It's going to be a lot of fun, and very comfortable. All right. So, um, literally a week ago, I took a picture here. Uh, these are different areas of the bathroom, but you can see that there's a shower stall on the left. Um, there's a flush toilet, and there are sinks with hot water. All right. There's a view from the mountain so this is my setup there you can see some of the things i'll be talking about like covers um and and you can certainly see dew uh but that's that's the setup that i did um just now so let's start with tents tarps chairs and tables so it does get windy on the mountain it's four thousand feet up uh the climate is highly variable uh and when it gets windy it is quick and it can blow away your tent and anything that's not anchored. It's a really good idea to stake down the tent. And if you're using a tarp, uh, stake down the tarp as well. Uh, and if you haven't camped, you haven't been to HSP, then it's also a really good idea to take that tent out and just practice with it. Just put it in the backyard or a park or even the living room and just get familiar with it. It'll save you time uh, and uh, make your experience much better up on the mountain. All right. Uh, tarps, uh, different people have different ideas uh, with regard to tarps, whether they're useful for equipment or not. I do use it. Uh, I find that it's helpful um, and um, it's easier to find things if you drop something. Uh, and um, uh, also covers. So dew is guaranteed to happen. There will be dew. Uh, dew forms because the heat energy escapes into outer space, right? So in the evening, it's summer, it's going to be relatively humid, uh, pun intended, and um, um, there, will be, there will be dew. So you want to prepare for that. Uh, uh, the easiest thing to prevent dew from forming is to cover the area with anything, literally. It could be a thin blanket. Obviously, we don't want to cover the top of our telescopes while we're using them um, for optical uh, use, optical astronomy. But anything else, if you have eyepieces, if you have uh, snacks, you know, whatever you don't want to get damp, you can cover it. Uh, you'll see um, uh, camping chairs, camping tables. So just really simple, but it's nice to set 
your stuff up up on the table sit down on the chair uh enjoy the evening all right plastic bins uh again just something i found to be useful to keep loose things together it's going to be dark you know which is why we're there and so it's just easier to to find things that are uh, organized a little bit and plastic bins are helpful for that um, also it is uh, warm during the day it could get hot during the day and it's sunny and so something to cover the telescope you know equipment um, that's light or uh, these aluminized or you know, metal metalized uh, covers are, are very helpful um, and um, will will keep uh, the um, heat away now uh, sleeping whether you're probably going to be like me sleeping in the tent uh, sleeping on the ground uh, even in the sleeping bag can be challenging so the ground is hard the ground is cold and the ground is wet it's very nice to have something in between your sleeping bag and the ground uh, there's several different options i use a cot uh, you can get them in the army surplus store you can get them in any camping store, uh, those are those are nice and easy. Uh, other people and I have in the past used a uh, a type of mat, so you could have an inflatable mat or you could have just a foam kind of map mat. But anything that uh, will put some space between you and the ground is is nice. All right, and then the other thing I found to be very useful is plastic trash bags. They're just you can cover stuff in a pinch. Uh, it, it is a policy uh, of experience learning in AHSP that any trash that you produce while on the mountain, please take that with you uh, back. And of course, the trash bag is useful for that. Uh, you can throw some clothes in there, go take a shower. So it's a nice thing to have. Okay, uh, Clothing and hygiene. Uh, so as I mentioned, uh, Spruce Knob Mountain Center, where we're going to be is 4,000 feet above sea level in metric system that's about 1.2 kilometers or three quarters of a mile so it, it, it's a mountain that has a microclimate the, the climate is highly variable it can get cold it can get warm uh, remember that when observing you're not moving you're not hiking you're not um, generating heat so so you can get cold um, the best thing to do is just to take a look at the forecast a few days ahead uh, take the lows, subtract 20 degrees from that, and dress for that. Um, and uh, that that's that's the way to be comfortable. Um, it, certainly layers are a great idea because as this climate changes, as it gets warm during the day, maybe you want to be in, in shorts and t-shirt, and at night you want to be in something much warmer. So layers will allow you to uh, have all the flexibility uh, for that. Uh, it, it is it is a grassy uh, clay soil, uh, so hiking boots are going to be your best bet. Uh, hiking's nice there, even short hikes are super nice, uh, or activities, and so hiking boots are a good idea. Um, a hat or cap, and especially during the day, again, we're 4,000 feet up, UV is strong there, the sun is, is powerful. I got sunburned one of the HSPs uh, in, in half an hour, so... It's a good idea to have uh, a, uh, a hat, a white brim hat's a really good idea. Uh, by the same token, it can get wet, you know, rain can come in quickly, and so you want some something for the rain, uh, probably a raincoat, umbrella is going to turn into a sail. Um, then uh, if you're staying up, if we get lucky and we get good weather, um, nice clear nights, then you'll probably stay up quite a bit during the day. I find it helpful to bring a sleeping eye mask, some earplugs, and just have some peace and quiet in the tent. Uh, not you know, required by any means, but it's a good thing to have. Uh, lastly, so the um, uh, showers uh, are, are there for you, but they, you know it's not a hotel, right? So bring a towel, bring shower shoes if you want, uh, shampoo, soap, anything you need for the shower that you're going to take with you. Right, and um, we'll go on to personal safety and comfort. So it it's just a really good idea to bring a first aid kit of any kind, even something simple with a few band-aids or, you know, maybe something um, uh, kind of packed together for a camping trip. But it's just a really good idea to bring a first aid, aid kit. That said, uh, experienced learning is going to have them on hand. 
there's going to be people with first aid kits, but you know, bring one just to to be um, safe. Um, alcohol wipes, so if, they're great for anything except optics, right? So I find them useful. I can wipe a, a coffee stain off the table, or uh, you know, just uh, keep things clean, uh, including my hands uh, at night. Uh, I, I like to have snacks. I like to have something warm to drink. Maybe you want something cold to drink. So bring that and know where it is so you can easily access it uh, during your observing. Uh, now, experienced learning will have, uh, at least usually they have disposable cups and they have mugs. But it's nice to bring your own mug. That way you can just go get some you know warm liquid, uh, take it to your observing station. Uh, and and have it with you and of course it you know we're not producing trash that way so it's a good idea um now i guess it's due to climate change i, I never saw bugs on the mountain there but now they're they're bugs like I, I got a couple of mosquito bites in the last couple of sessions so uh i am recommending bringing some bug spray just so that when it's not windy you know you obviously keep the bugs away uh, sunscreen, I think that's essential. That that's absolutely necessary. Uh, easy to get sunburned. The the sun is powerful. Uh, it's very gentle, but it's very powerful. So certainly a good idea to do that. Lastly, um, I've seen exactly one tire puncture uh, in the four or five times that I've been to HSP. But uh, uh, why chance it? Right, bring bring a, a fix a flat or something to. Uh, to fix a tire if need be and um, uh, there are 110 volt outlets so if you have a, a plug-in pump you can use that you can just drive up um, to um, the yurts and, and plug in and, and pump up the tire if need be okay so this is just about skirting astronomy not not getting into astronomy not competing with terry but um, just uh, things that make astronomy more uh, enjoyable is uh, first of all of course we're looking at fires far out in the universe so we want to avoid anything that interferes with that uh, it takes 40 minutes to uh, uh, be dark adapted so uh, it, it's uh, and it only takes a second of a bright white light to kill that to destroy that um, dark vision night vision so uh, we're we're all using red flashlights um, and uh you know the least intensity red light also interferes with um night vision just less so um now if there is an emergency and i mean threat to health and safety then forget about astronomy just you know use whatever light you you, uh, you need and uh get where you need to to go but if it's not an emergency then please don't um i did mention the light colored luminized tarp um you know, in, in general, covers. Uh, there are dedicated covers, so I use the Telegismos. I'm not here to sell anything or, you know, market anything, but uh, these are nice. Um, like you see on the left, uh, they both uh, keep the heat away and they keep the dew away and they keep the rain away. So those are nice, but other options uh, exist, certainly. Now, uh, about the cars. So for some reason, uh, modern cars in the U.S., you can't turn off all the lights. It's not possible if the car is on. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm just keeping the car off. But you can practice uh, in the evening uh, before getting to HSP to see if there's a button that will maybe turn off the dome light. Maybe there's some option to reduce the time that the headlights are on. And then if something cannot be turned off, then there's red uh, transparent tape available that you can just put over these lights on the car and at least they'll be red uh, it's a good idea to practice just so you know what to do so you're not figuring it out while you're you know uh, while it's getting dark and you're all excited about starting to observe um, blow bulb i find it much easier than um, uh, canned air uh, it, it's it's always there you know it's always charged and it works and uh, seems like a good idea uh, worked well for me uh, then the other thing I find useful is uh, something to wipe the dew with. Of course, you can wipe other things with that as well, you know, spills, whatever, but there's a lot of dew, right? So if you have something to wipe that um, or, or cover uh, equipment, cover your eyepieces, cover your snacks, that, that always comes in handy. Um, and then, of course, uh, uh, in about 10 years or so that I've been doing astronomy, 
uh, I think one thing I realized is Murphy is very strong with us. Things that can go wrong will go wrong, especially with astrophotography. And so bringing hex keys, at least maybe a screwdriver, whatever you need to um, uh, keep things operating um, is a good idea. Always, always helped out. Uh, lastly, the spares kit. So cables, I've, I've had USB cables snap, uh, ran, uh, definitely uh, running out of battery is sort of a feature uh, of at least astrophotography, uh, especially when it's wet because the dew heater takes so much power. Uh, charging USB, as I mentioned before, there are 110 volt outlets uh, there and um, uh, you will be able to charge batteries. Okay, so uh, lastly, things that don't need to be brought. Uh, generators are allowed, but I can't think of a possible reason to have them unless you just really want one because you know there's power, there's a battery shuttle, um, and um, at night, uh, you know, you're, you're not permitted to run them uh, at night when it's quiet. So uh, it doesn't seem to be a, a very compelling reason to bring one unless you want to. Uh, also toilet paper, there, there's plenty of toilet paper. Uh, that's been asked multiple times, so don't, don't need to bring that. Um, and then um, in terms of meals, so the open fires or smoke, that's one big no-no, right? So don't bring firewood, don't bring fire pits, please. Um, those are uh, not allowed. Uh, you know, as, as I said, we're looking at fires far away in the universe. We, we don't want ones next to us to uh, interfere with our observing. So no fires. That being said, uh, you know, if you're if you're cooking, if you want to cook, uh, a uh, camping stove is perfectly fine. Uh, and um, uh, lastly, uh, you know, if you have signed up for meals, there's plenty of snacks available experience learning puts out snacks you have uh, liquids available hot liquids cold liquids uh throughout the day and night so uh you know if if you um have signed up for a meal plan there's really no need to bother bringing any kind of cooking equipment unless you want them all right so that's uh it for my presentation chris i'll give it back to you and happy to answer any questions so again um if if you have some questions for Alex, um, you can either put them in the chat or come off mute and ask uh, directly. No questions, Alex, you uh, hit a home run, obviously. <laughs> well, I'm available <laughs> to answer later, just, you know. That's fine. Uh, let's serve, I'm happy to. No, it's, it's fantastic. Thank you so much for uh, uh, doing the presentation um, today. And uh, have a great vacation, okay? Thanks so much, guys. See you at the HSP.